All right, so uh, first we're going to upload the student survey data set and we're going to rename it survey all lowercase. Okay, there's the data. Y'all know how to look at data by now. Um, so I have the hard copy of the notes that I emailed out to your student email. Uh, so you should have this in, again in your student email account. You should have a copy of these notes. So you don't have to write these 7,000 lines of notes that we have right here. Uh, this software cuts off at 15 minutes. So for time's sake, I've left it typed in and I'm not going to type it in real time. I'm just going to talk about what each line of code is doing. So the lab that you're going to do in class, lab 5.2, uh, y'all can start this today. Um, or you can just make sure you have these notes and write them down and then y'all can uh, um, work on the lab tomorrow. Just try to have it done by Tuesday, you know, since we have a three-day weekend. Uh, remember for the lab tomorrow that on-ramp scripts down here and then you can open up lab 5.2 uh, if necessary. Okay, which I would suggest you doing that for the lab. Okay. So we're going to go over how to code ANOVA. And again, ANOVA is for at least three groups, so more than two groups, so three or more. So we're going to subset one group that has three variables. So if you look at the top, it says subset the data set. That's a typo, my bad. Subset the data set to look only at student. Oh, man. That was galore. Students that are freshman, sophomore, or junior. Okay. I'm going to call it survey three. Call this whatever you want. Doesn't matter. So this is weird. Okay. But this is the survey data set and this beginning part here should look familiar. We are going to tell it to go into the survey data set and subset out the survey. And then if we look, the variable that tells me if you're a freshman or sophomore is called classification. Okay. Um, so we're going to go into the survey data set. And we want the classification variable to equal equal the word freshman in quotes. That will give me all the freshmen. The symbol that I want to talk about is this right here. Uh, that is not an L. Okay, in the Google document that I emailed out, it kind of looks like an L. It is not. It is right below your backspace. Uh, there's like the backslash or forward slash. <clears throat> and then right above it is a straight up and down bar. Uh, that's the button you press. It's, you hit shift that button and it gives you the up and down bar. That is a coding symbol for or, O-R. Um, so if you look at this first part, it says that I need to go into the survey data set and I want the classification variable to equal equal freshman. Or I want you to go into the survey data set and I want the classification variable to equal equal sophomore. Or <clears throat> I want you to go into survey and I want the classification to equal equal junior. Notice the only comma that I put in the entire code is at the very, very end before I close the brackets. Okay, I did not put a comma everywhere. You still need the random comma, but it should go right before the closing brackets at the very end. I know this is a lot. I know it looks long, but the good thing is, is you just get to copy it. Okay, I'm not even having you do an assignment today because I'm not there and I don't want to overly confuse you. Um, but I do want you to look at this code, type it in yourself and make sure that you can copy it and make sure it works. Um, sorry, my voice is fading as the day goes, but it's kind of late right now. Um, so um, this first line three, when we run survey three, <clears throat> you see that the original survey data set has 379 and the new one has 366. So apparently this school or whatever the student survey doesn't have a lot of seniors. Um, okay. Then it wants me to individually subset out each grade. So again, this first subset that I made contains freshmen, sophomore, and juniors. Okay. But now I need to subset out each individual grade because remember that one of our assumptions is that all three groups have a normal histogram. Okay, so if all three groups have a normal histogram, 
in order to make an Instagram, I've got to make the group first, right? So uh, I make a freshman group, a freshman subset, a sophomore. So make the freshman, and there's 184 freshmen. Make the sophomore, make the junior. Okay, hopefully we remember how to do that. If not, there's literally the code right there. So um, the lab is going to ask for the mean and standard deviation of all of them. Um, so remember that mean is the word mean and then in parentheses is data set money sign variable. And it wants you to know the happiness rating, which if you look is the variable happy. It's a scale of zero to 100. How happy do you consider yourself on average? Uh, kind of a sad variable, but um, so the mean, you can run all the means. We don't really care about those, but the lab is going to ask you to find those. So, you know, we do what UT wants, I suppose. Um, so there's mean and standard deviation, if you don't remember, but the mean of freshman, mean of sophomore, mean of junior, standard deviation, and so on and so forth. All right. This is why I want you to use the lab script when you do the lab is the box plot. And the ANOVA, the code's kind of weird. And no one expects you to memorize this. You will have a script if it's on the lab exam, which will be in February. Um, so you don't have to memorize this yet. You just have to understand, like, what needs to change sometimes. So remember that we called this original data set Survey 3. And Survey 3 is the data set that has all three groups in it. Um, so I'm going to make a box plot that has all three. And if you look at survey three, money sign happy, because we are comparing the happiness score to the classification or to the grade that the student is in. We are seeing that if the happiness level of students is independent of the grouping variable of grade. Okay. So the survey three data set is the data set that has all three. And the variable that the numerical variable that we are testing, the number goes first. So since the numerical variable is happy, it goes before this little Spanish tilde looking thing. Um, and I actually don't even know where that is on the keyboard. I forgot, but y'all are smart. Y'all will find it. And if you can't, um, just copy and paste it from the lab script or from my notes if you need to. I'm staring at my keyboard and I can't find it. Uh, anyway, I only got 15 minutes, so I gotta hurry. Um, so survey three, again, the first variable is the numerical variable. It's the number. That's very, very important if you type this backwards. No bueno. Uh, then you got that little weird symbol. Uh, and then we've got survey three again, because again, that's the data set. And I actually like that this kind of highlights it. So this survey three and this survey three, those should be the same because we're comparing out of the same data set and we're comparing the happiness variable to the classification variable. These are labels. So the main is the title of the whole thing. And then y'all know how to label, you know, so make this fit to whatever the lab says tomorrow. So if you look at the box plot, those are super small. So it's kind of hard to see. So this button will full screen it. So there's my box plots. Um, <clears throat> they look pretty similar. You can see the medians are about the same. The IQRs are about the same. The min and maxes are about the same. Sophomore doesn't go as low. I mean, there's a freshman that's literally happy 0% of the time, which is pathetic. Uh, or they need help, I guess. Um, but uh, so there's the three box plots if they ask you for that. And notice that X lab, you know, grade goes down here. Y lab, happiness rating goes up here. And happiness rating by grade, the main title goes up here. So make sure y'all are labeling your stuff uh, correctly. Uh, that's just the box plot. Who cares? Uh, you can check the shape of these. Uh, you may feel like a, you know, silly, but shape is kind of easier if you tilt your computer sideways. That way you're looking at them sideways, not up and down. But if I do that, you obviously can't see it. So... Sometimes I'll just tip my computer over if we're trying to do the shape of a box plot. Remember that the, the box plots must be approximately normal or there needs to be at least 30 people in the group. So do these look normal? Honestly, no, they don't. They all look skewed. 
So, but there's 184, 59, and 123. So we actually don't care. You know, there it's above 30, so it's fine. Okay, so here's the weird ANOVA code. Okay, again, nobody expects you to memorize this. Use the script on the lab, and you will use the script on the lab exam if they ask you to do ANOVA, which I highly doubt they will. But model days, you can do it whatever you want. You don't have to change that. AOV stands for ANOVA. I don't know why it's not the word ANOVA. ANOVA is not that hard to type. But, but again, it's the numerical variable first. So it's the numerical variable tilde thingy classification. Okay, so the number tilde thing and then the grouping variable. And the data we are pulling from is survey three. Okay, so you're going to copy this code exactly. The only thing that's going to change is your number variable, your grouping variable, and whatever you called your subset. Okay. And if you run that, absolutely nothing happens. Okay, it runs down here and it throws this random list of 13 over here, right? So to actually see the results, you have to run the summary of, it's called model days because that's what I called it. So if you just leave it model days, you can always type model days here. So the summary, it fills out the table for us. You know, isn't that nice? We don't have to do this um, by hand anymore now that you all have taken exam five. Um, so it gives me degrees of freedom, that sum of squares, the mean of squares, and the F value. <coughs> Uh, so if it asks for those values, you know, you can just type them in to the computer. Um, <clears throat> so if, <clears throat> if your p-value for the ANOVA is less than 0.05, you need to run your postdoc test. Uh, ours technically isn't, but we're going to run it anyway uh, because I need to show you how to run the postdoc stuff. So this p-value is not less than, but we're going to pretend like it is. Um, so for the post hoc stuff, uh, I know we call it Bonferroni and yada yada, but Tukey is a different way. Uh, for the exam, we did Bonferroni because it's mathematically easier, but Tukey is another guy that named this after himself. Uh, but this is actually uh, a better way to do it. Uh, and ours can do it for us, so we don't care that the math's more complicated. So um, the Tukey, you do Tukey HSD every single time. Copy that exactly. And then this should always uh, be model days unless you change the name up here, which just don't change it. And then you can always type this exact code every time. Um, and when you're running your post hoc, hopefully this looks familiar for those of us that passed exam five. But you have these three P values. So if you compare juniors and freshmen in an independent T test, you get a P value 0.56. Sophomore and freshman, you get a P value 0.98 and whatever, right? So if you reject the total study up here, like let's say this was 0.01 or something. If we reject everything, we can go down here and see specifically where's the actual difference because we can see which of these relationships here do we reject or all of them. Um, and I know on the exam, we compared the p-value to Bonferroni, uh, but since we're in our studio, we're gonna go back to comparing p-value to the standard uh, 0 0.05 uh, that we usually do uh, in R. Um, okay, I know that was fast, but this software cuts me off at 15 minutes and I didn't want to give you all two 15 minute videos. So, uh, make sure you're messaging me on remind or emailing me. If you have any questions today, I just want you to copy these notes and watch these videos as many times as you need. Uh, try typing this into our studio yourself to make sure you, you run everything. And then I would have this pulled up for the lab tomorrow. So you only have to change, uh, what needs to be changed. And remember that in the files tab. So if you're on a plot, go to files, on ramp scripts, and then you have all the labs in here and open lab 5.2, just click it. And when you click it, you can see that UT is actually doing most, actually, oh, doing almost all of the code for you. You have to do a couple replace code things. So you just need to understand sort of what you're doing because uh, UT is going to code most of it for you uh, in the script. Again, message me if you have questions, and uh, I hope this helps.